Just so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you home again. But no more vacations for you. That's it. <laughs> Hope you really enjoyed that one. Praise yeah, the Lord. Praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you have your Bibles with you? You know, I think last Sunday I preached 20 minutes. 20 minute sermon. I think it was 20 minutes long. Say miracle signs and wonders. Still happen in the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'll never, never, never doubt this word because it is the word of God. I've got ears to hear, heart to receive. So teach to me the word of God. So I believe it. I receive it right now in my life. In Jesus' name. I want to talk about the fruit of the Spirit tonight. Such an important thing because the fruit of the Spirit is the character of Christ. So turn with me to Galatians chapter 5. We'll start in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is uh, love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith, and meekness and temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. In other words, if you're going to be full of the Holy Ghost, there should be a demonstration of that. And the demonstration should be fruit in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit. Love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and meekness. Glory to God. Say, that's me. That's me. Sometimes. <laughs> no, that's us. Glory to God. All the time. All the time. Glory to God. Now, here's the thing about fruit. There are four truths about fruit. Number one, fruit is the evidence of life. Number two, fruit identifies the tree. Number three, fruit is life-giving. And number four, fruit contains the seed of multiplication. Someone say, praise the Lord. Let's break that down just a little bit. Are you ready for the word? Fruit is evidence of life. Dead things do not bear fruit. Have you noticed that? <laughs> things that are dead, things that are dead is what gets collected up and thrown in the fire. But things that are alive bear fruit. I love the springtime. I love the flowers. I love the fruit. I love the, the new leaves coming on the tree. Why? It's a sign of life. During the winter time, the leaves fall and everything looks like sticks. And, but in the springtime, in the springtime, resurrection. <laughs> There's life. There's fruit, glory to God. And those flowers mean life. And the fruit means life. Jesus said, look with me in John 15 and 1. I'm the true vine. My Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Uh-oh. Everybody say, uh-oh. Uh -oh. We need to be fruitful. I said we need to be fruitful. And there's no reason why we wouldn't be. We're tapped into the vine. We are tapped in to the very life force of God. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. What does that mean? He just prunes off the leafy parts, prunes off the junky parts, prunes off the things that's not bearing any fruit at all. These are my scissors right here. He prunes, he prunes them off. Why? You don't need that stuff. You don't want to be full of leaves. You want to be full of fruit. Glory to God. In <laughs> verse 3. You're already clean because you have the word which I've spoken to you. That word is a pruner, isn't it? It'll prune the junk right out of your life. It won't, it really. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It's going to cut that junk out of your life. Yeah. Verse 4, abide in me and I in you. The branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Here's the principle. Fruit is evidence of life. Dead things do not bear fruit. 
dead things have no use. It's just cast away. But fruitful things, that gets the care of the gardener. The gardener wants to see fruit and abundant fruit, so he's going to prune away the things that just, just take sap away from the fruit. He doesn't want the sap going to the leaf. He wants the sap going to the fruit. He doesn't want your energy to go things, to things that don't matter. He wants the energy to go to things that do matter, that produce results. We can spend a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of resources on, in our life on things that just don't add up. Now, they may look good. It might be nice and leafy. It might look good, but it's not fruit. It's not fruitful. And Jesus says, well, I'll just trim that back. I just trim that back. So your energy, so the life force goes to the fruitful things. Living things produce fruit. Fruit is a sign and an evidence of life. That's number one. Here's number two. Fruit identifies the tree. Apples come from a apple tree. Lemons come from a lemon tree. Asparagus comes from a asparagus tree. I'm not sure about that last one. <laughs> That's right. Kit Kats come from a Kit Kat tree. Money comes from a money tree. That's right. This is good preaching tonight. This is, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure how accurate I am, but it sounds good. Listen, that apple comes from the apple tree. The pear comes from the pear tree. Lemon comes from the Why? Because the tree is going to bear fruit that identifies the tree. Matthew 7 and 15, beware of false prophets who come in to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Have you ever met one of those? Verse 16, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? No, no, no. Verse 17, even so every good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down, thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Amen. He says it again in Matthew 12 and 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. So fruit's an identifier. Fruit identifies the tree. So the works of our lives, the attitude of our lives, the character of our lives identifies the tree that we are. Amen. 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 Number three, fruit is life-giving. Fruit gives life to others. It nourishes others. It sustains others. Others come to the tree to get that apple. They come to the tree to get that fruit because it's good for them. Fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. People need love. People need joy. People need peace and patience and goodness and gentleness. They need to be into your life, and you're like a magnet to them. Your love draws them in. Your peace draws them in. Your patience draws them in, and they just like, let me just have some of that love, some of that joy, some of that peace, some of that patience. Let me just have some of that in my life because your love nourishes them. Your love sustains them. Your joy gets on them. You're contagious. And people, people are drawn to fruit because it is good and it's satisfying and it really is healing. Let me tell you a, a truth. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Hallelujah. Deep spiritual truths. But, but the fruit has healing properties to it. And the fruit of love and joy and peace has healing properties to it. Number four, fruit contains the seed 
of multiplication. Fruit inside the apple are apple seeds. And really, the flesh of the apple, the fruit that we enjoy eating, is there to sustain the seed. It protects the seed, it feeds the seed till the seed gets in the ground and produces another apple tree. So the multiplication element of the tree is inside that fruit. So the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy and peace, multiplies as the seed of love and joy and peace gets in somebody else's heart. They may be experiencing the fruit. You know, we eat the, the flesh of the apple and we spit out the seed, as it were, but that seed is going to produce another tree and more fruit and more fruit. So what we want is the seed of that fruit to get down into the good ground of people's hearts so that our love, our joy, our peace gets sown into their heart and multiplication happens. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Everybody say multiplication. multiplication. Mark 4 and 20. But these seeds are the ones sown on good ground. When you love somebody, you're sowing seed. When you're joyous, you're sowing seed. When you are patient, you're sowing seed. Peaceful. The seeds of peace. Glory to God. These are the ones sown on good ground. They hear the word. They accept it. Bears fruit. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Seed is the element of multiplication that is within the fruit. There is a multiple, uh, an element of multiplication within your love, your joy, your peace. It's called seed. And your love is power-packed with seed that goes from you into somebody else's heart. And now it's planted. And now it's rooted. And now it's going to start springing up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Isn't that a powerful, powerful thing? So when we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, we say... The fruit of the Spirit is proof of life. The fruit of the Spirit identifies the tree that we are in Christ. The fruit of the Spirit feeds others either through the love of the joy of people or through the service that our love does for somebody else. The fruit of the Spirit is seed of multiplication. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. Let's put up Galatians 5 and 22. We'll all read this together. King James Version, Galatians 5 and 22. Everybody, one, two, three, read. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, I mean gentleness and goodness and faith, meekness and temperance. Against such there is no law. Praise the Lord. Say, that's me. This is so contrary to our flesh nature. Our fallen nature does not act like that. No, it does not. Our fallen nature is at the other end of the spectrum, fruit of the Spirit, works of the flesh. They're both in Galatians 5, but they're really different lists, aren't they? The fruit of the Spirit, the works of the flesh. And our fallen nature is what we default to so easily because we've lived it for so long. And then we come into the kingdom of His dear Son, out of the kingdom of the enemy, and we're translated into the kingdom of His dear Son. But a lot comes with us, doesn't it? There's some attitudes, there's some habits, there's some lifestyles, there's some junk. There's, I mean, we usually move into the kingdom of His dear Son carrying suitcases and steamer trunks and, and a U-Haul and we just bring it all with us, don't we? And then the Holy Ghost has got to chip it off of our lives and amen. He said, the Holy Ghost says, just leave that stuff. Wrong kingdom. Leave that, leave that mind frame, that worldview, that vocabulary. Then just leave it all back in that old kingdom. It worked there. It doesn't work in the new kingdom. Is a hindrance in the new kingdom. Praise the Lord. For instance, love. Now, when he talks about the fruit of the Spirit, love, love is the chief one, love and joy and peace and patience and goodness, these are not commonly found in people in abundance. But these are the character of Christ. This is the character of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit. 
And if you look at love, Paul was good enough to give us the very definition of love. Since we're talking about the things of the Spirit in this series, we have the gifts of the Spirit introduced in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, and then we have their operation discussed in the church in chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. But chapter 13, wedge sandwiched right between the two, between the introduction of the gifts and the operation of the gifts, we have the motivation of the gifts, which is love. Amen. Which is love. Amen. And he tells us what love is in 1 Corinthians 13. Love suffers long. Love is patient. Long suffering. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does this sound familiar? Is this how we operate? Okay, I'll keep reading. Verse 5, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, not provoke, thinks no evil. Verse 6, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Now, this description of love is a, a foreign concept to many people because it takes the Holy Ghost to produce fruit like this. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. I don't know. Is that us? Is that me? Sometimes we say, no, 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 no. But by the Spirit... This is where we're going by the Spirit. The potential is on the inside. It lives on the inside. It's not impossible. It wouldn't be in the book if it's impossible. It is what lives in us right now. Love is patient. Yes, yes, yes. Love is kind. Yes, it is. It doesn't envy, doesn't parade, isn't puffed up, isn't rude, doesn't seek its own, isn't provoked, doesn't think evil. Doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Say, that's me. I believe that's true. Yeah, by faith. Of course it's by faith. That's right, Debs. Absolutely by faith. Glory to God. Now, a lot of people will say, I am who I am. It's just the way I am. God loves me the way I am, <laughs> and that's just me. Deal with it. And we'll go straight to the power gifts of the Spirit, because we want to operate in the Spirit, and we'll go to the power gifts and not the fruits. We'll go to the power gifts. We'll go to the, to the miracles and gifts of healings and operations of miracles and faith and go right to tongues and interpretation of tongues and discerning of spirits and prophecy. In fact, prophecy is used a lot of times as an excuse for being rude. Well, I'm a prophet. I just got to tell you the way it is. <laughs> I got a prophet's anointing on me. I just got to say it the way it is. Just got to say it the way it is. Thus saith the Lord. But we can't ignore the fruit in favor of the gifts. They go hand in hand. Paul was very clear about this in 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I become a sounding brass, a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith that I can remove mountains but have not love I am nothing man he's really hitting it home here isn't he verse 3 and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned then have not love it profits me nothing so love is the motivation to all the gifts of the spirit you can't overlook uh, the fruit of the Spirit in favor of the gifts of the Spirit. They go hand in hand. I've heard it described as a dove. Uh, the Holy Spirit came down in the bodily resemblance of a dove when he was, Jesus was baptized. And so you often see the dove in stained glass windows in churches and the nine feathers on one wing, the nine feathers on the other wing. And 
and people will liken it to the nine gifts of the Spirit, the nine fruits of the Spirit, balance out the dove, and if you're heavy in the gifts, you're flying in a circle. If you ignore the gifts and it's all about love, you're flying in a circle. you got to have the balance. Someone praise the Lord. Now, let me close by saying this. How do I cultivate these essential fruits of the Spirit? If this is what we're called to, how do I cultivate them? If I'm to bear much fruit, how do I cultivate the fruit of the Spirit? Well, number one, remember it's the fruit of the Spirit that's acting on our spirit, the Spirit that lives within. There's it's a spiritual operation in our life. He's nurturing change within us so that our reaction response or our uh, proactive response in life is fruit response and not flesh response. And the Spirit helps us to take the blinders off to find out where we're at. What are the things in our life that are not fruitful, that need to be bundled up, cast into the fire, cast away, pruned out of our lives? What are the things in our lives that are not fruitful? The Holy Spirit helps us with that. And so uh, the Holy Spirit is constantly pricking and prodding in our spirit so that we will manifest fruit and not flesh. So number one in how do I cultivate fruit in my life is an understanding it is a spiritual operation. And this is why I'm always encouraging folks, pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Spirit, because that just causes things to get going in your life, spiritually speaking. We should be going through our day just praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, because that activates your human spirit to engage with the Holy Spirit for there to be a download, an impartation of the, the heavenly into your spirit man. Glory to God. So number one, realize that it is an operation of the Spirit in your life. Here's number two. Affirm in your life the fruitfulness of the Spirit. You just need to affirm it. You need to declare, I am loving. I am joyous. I am peaceful. I am patient. I am. You say, well, that just sounds silly. No, what you're doing is sowing seed. You're declaring over yourself. You're calling the things that are not as though they are. If the Holy Spirit says you're quick to anger, you need to get a handle on your anger. Or you're quick to judge. You need to get a handle on that judgment. Or you're quick to be whatever, rude or whatever it might be. The Holy Spirit lifts the blinder. You say, you know what? That is true. I, I do bend that way. That is right. And there's reasons for that, but there's not excuses for that. And I need to fix that in my life. And so the Holy Spirit removes the blinder, and you see, then you start to call the things that are not as though they are. I am loving. I am patient. I am gentle. I am good. I am. Y'all see what I'm saying? affirmation a positive personal present tense affirmation of faith in your life works wonders to bring about change in your life especially if you lose it and you just you just <laughs> you just get in the flesh for a moment and then you catch yourself nope that's not me that's not me i am loving i am patient I, listen, if you can do that, you've won the battle. You are a winner. You're a winner if you can affirm. Because you realize, you know what? I dropped the ball right there, but I'm not out of the game. I'm going to win this game. Glory to God, me and the Holy Ghost. I am loving. I am joyous. I am peaceful. I am patient. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I told the story before that uh, we're running out of time. Can't tell that story. So, um, <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The, the next thing is that, so number one, we realize this is a spiritual process. Number two, we affirm fruitfulness in our life. Number three, we meditate on the words that I read you in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and forward, the fruit of the Spirit, is, and we meditate on those things. Joshua said, I'm going to meditate on your word day and night that I may observe to do accordingly. 
in Joshua 1 and 8. I'm going to meditate on it. When you dominate your thinking, listen, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh, so what are you going to do? You're going to meditate on it. Meditate on it. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. And you can even make it a little song. You can make it into a, a little rhythm thing. You can just roll it over in your thinking all day long. Fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and gentleness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Hallelujah. Fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. Fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. That's right. Glory to God. I mean, have fun with it. Man. <laughs> Come on now. I want to tell you about the fruit of the Spirit. Hey, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. The fruit of the Spirit is peace and patience. The fruit of the Spirit, word. Okay. So you meditate on it day and night because this book of the law will not depart from my mouth. But I'll meditate on it both day and night that I may observe to do according to all that is written therein and then you'll be fruitful it says then you'll be prosperous and have good success praise the Lord now I heard, a, I heard a, one of my mentors on video say this and it is true it's true what you want study it what do you want you want peace study peace you want joy? Study joy. What do you want in life? Because you have to know the principles of it. You have to know how it operates. So you study it. And as you study it, you become an expert in it. Romans 12 and 2. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you transform your life? Renew your mind. You renew your mind, so you study it. You know, if, if you want to know how to go from anger-driven to love-driven, study the life of Paul. Paul was a Saul before he's ever a Paul. He was a murderer. He was a barbarian. He persecuted the church, tormented the church, tortured the church. But he became the one who gave us the most glorious definition of love uh, that a people have ever held in their hand before. How did he do that? How to study it? Study it. If you want peace, study it. If you want wealth, study it. If you want health, study it. Don't just wait for things to come along. Study it. Get it. The wisdom of God is available. And finally, I think this is the greatest one. This is what I'll close on. Finally, this is it. If we want to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit in our life, here it is. Make it the greatest desire of your life. Amen. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. If love, joy, peace, is the greatest desire of your life and you pray and you believe that you receive you will have it I said you will have it that's a promise of God whatsoever things you desire so if your desire is I don't want my quick response to be anger or fear or frustration or doubt or flesh I don't want that to be my first response my desire Lord is the joy of the Lord is my strength my desire Lord is not short-tempered but long-suffering patience patience Hallelujah. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them 
and you will have them. If you desire the fruit of the Spirit to manifest in your life, truly desire it. And not just have sort of an acknowledgement of it. But you desire to be a person of love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and gentleness and meekness and temperance. God will give you the desires of your heart. Believe that you receive it and you will have it. Did you get anything out of this today? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Fruit of the Spirit. That's a good thing. That's the character of Christ. Is that what you want? You got it. It's living on the inside of you already. Please stand with me. Let me speak a blessing over you. Everybody going to heaven? We're all born again believers. Anybody need to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior tonight? Raise your hand and we'll pray and make sure that we're all going. We're all good? We're all going. Okay. Praise God. I just pray that the Holy Spirit stirs deeply within us a desire that we would... uh, be fruitful that we'd have the desire to be fruitful in our lives that the love response remember the Holy Spirit always leads us into a love response flesh always leads us into a fear response anger response critical response the Holy Spirit always leads you into a love response hallelujah so I pray over you tonight. Lift your hearts with me. Father God, we want to be more like Jesus, less like us. We came into your kingdom with a lot of baggage, Lord, and we want to shed the heavy weights right now. All the old mannerisms, the old way of thinking, the old everything. And we want to take on the character of Christ. We want to be more like Jesus. We're told in 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 that the Holy Spirit takes us from glory to glory into the image of Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what we're hungry for. Father God, together, right now, in agreement together, Lord, we declare our greatest desire is to be fruitful, is to bear much fruit, much fruit, much love, much joy, much peace. Much service in the kingdom of God. That's our desire, Lord. We thank you for it. Now, with every heart lifted up before the Lord, say, here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Holy Spirit. Here it is. Mold it, shape it, change it into the heart of God. Full of compassion. Full of forgiveness. Full of understanding. Full of love. And everybody said, Amen and amen. So I say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the church said, amen and amen. God bless you all.